this video, we are going to discuss about diodes. Diode is a semiconductor device with two terminals, typically allowing the flow of electrons only in one direction. Let's take an example to demonstrate the working of a diode. Consider a one-way road wherein the traffic is allowed only in one direction and the policeman is acting as the depletion region which obstructs the flow of traffic in the opposite direction. Semiconductors are elements with four electrons in their outermost shell. Now, when a pentavalent impurity is added to it, now here the octet gets completed, plus an extra electron remains in the material. Therefore, it gets a negative charge. Hence, the material is known as n-type. Now, when a trivalent impurity is added, the octet is not complete. It consists of only 7 electrons. That is, it is deficient of 1 electron. Therefore, it gets a positive charge and therefore this material is known as p-type. The semiconductor material normally used for making a diode are germanium or silicon. A diode is made by doping the semiconductor material with p-type impurities on one side and n-type impurities on the other. This creates a p-n junction in the middle portion of the diode. Now the electrons from the n side, which are near the junction, migrate towards the p-type. Due to this migration towards the p-type, the n-type gets positive charge, that is holes are left in the n-type. Hence, due to these charges, a depletion layer is formed near the junction. Due to these charges, a static electric field is generated, which is known as barrier potential. Barrier potential is the minimum voltage required to overcome or cross the depletion region. For silicon, it is 0.7 volts and for germanium, it is 0.3 volts. Here, the p-type acts as the anode and the n-type acts as the cathode. This is the symbol for the diode. This is the anode and this is the cathode. When we connect a battery across the diode, it acts as an open or closed switch depending upon the biasing of the diode. In order to use the diode as an open switch, we use reverse biasing, wherein the p-type is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and n-type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Due to the reverse biasing, the holes from the p-side are attracted towards the negative terminal of the battery and the electrons on the n-side are attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery. Due to this, the charges are moving away from the, uh, from the junction, therefore the depletion region gets widened. And due to this, there is no flow of electrons across the diode. Hence, the current flow is restricted. So, the circuit acts as an open switch. To use the diode as a closed switch, we use forward biasing, wherein the p-type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the end side is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Here, repulsion occurs between the positive and the negative terminals and hence the electrons are migrated towards the p-type and they move out towards the positive terminal. The same occurs with the holes. They migrate towards the end side and move out to the outer circuit towards the negative terminal. This generates current in the circuit and hence it acts as a closed switch. A Zener diode allows current to flow from its anode to its cathode like a normal semiconductor diode, but it also permits current to flow in the reverse direction when its Zener voltage is reached. A Zener diode is basically a diode 
which also allows current in the reverse direction. Now this graph depicts the transfer characteristics of a Zener diode. In the forward bias, it acts as a normal diode where the threshold voltage is reached, the current is conducted across the diode. It also conducts in the reverse direction, in the reverse bias, where the, when the breakdown voltage is reached, the current starts flowing and the current remains constant even though there is changes in the input voltage.